Welcome to PCR TV, coming to you live from Europe PCR 2019. My name is Darren Milet and I'm an interventional cardiologist from Galway University Hospital. I'm joined today by uh, Dr. Felix Mafood. Welcome, Felix, Hi. from Fatharland University. And the topic today, Felix, is uh, the new European Hypertension Guidelines um, released last year at the ESC. Um, many uh, busy interventional cardiologists wouldn't have the, uh, the time to get through these, the, uh, these guidelines in detail. Can you tell us, has the definition of hypertension changed uh, since the last edition of these guidelines? I think there are three most important topics that we have to discuss you know, for interventionists, what is relevant for daily clinical practice. You are mentioning the definition. Indeed, that did not change. Unlike the US guidelines, where the colleagues lowered the definition of hypertension to blood pressure values starting already at 130 over 80, the European consensus was to remain the definition, to remain with the definition of 140 over 90. For almost all patients, there's one exception, blood pressure correlates with age. The older you get, the higher is your blood pressure by nature. And uh, in patients above 80, blood pressure starts at 160 over 90. Okay, that's interesting. Um, tell me then about the, about the threshold to start treatment or, or, or what the, the new treatment modalities are. Is there still a, a very strong um, uh, indication first for trying lifestyle modification in all patients? Yeah, you know, that's always difficult. We know that it's not working on all patients, lifestyle modification to lower blood pressure. And the guidelines recommend a period of three months in patients with moderate to mild cardiovascular risk. In high-risk individuals, you should start treatment immediately. So, you know, I think that is relevant for clinical practice mm. because there, there is no time to wait for a month and month and month to see a blood pressure drop in patients with lifestyle modification. If it's not working, we have to treat that patient and we have to lower his or her blood pressure to the target. And that indeed also changed. The second very important um, commandment of these guidelines is indeed that we lower the target blood pressure value to 120, 230 and 70 to 80 in diastolic. So for the first time, guidelines on hypertension recommended a window a corridor of blood pressure that should be targeted in, in almost all patients. There's one exception, again, the elderly patients above 65. There you should target a blood pressure value of 130 to 140. Okay. But again, that's a big change, you know. I mean, getting a patient from 140, uh, above 140, 90 to 120 to 30, that's, that requires a lot of attention and likely a lot of drugs to get them to control. So tell me about the drug treatment. We yeah. traditionally would have started with a single agent and, and yeah. moved up then to combination therapy. Is there a role for, for starting combination therapy maybe a little earlier? What we learned by heart actually also with all the device-based trials is that patients are not adhering to, a lifestyle, to, to, uh, to lifestyle but also to a lifelong drug a treatment for hypertension. So non-adherence rates are very high in hypertension. We know that up to 50% of all patients treated chronically with antihypertensive agents do not adhere to the regimen that we prescribe. So that's a huge problem. But we also learned that, you know, when we simplify the treatment regimen by using combination therapies, using reduced daily doses, so one tablet with two drugs inside, and that is actually the first recommendation uh, for the for the uh, for the treatment algorithm in hypertensive individuals, so again above 140 to 90, to start with a dual fixed combination in almost all patients, consisting of an ACE inhibitor or an ARP in combination with a calcium channel blocker and a diuretic. Um, di diuretic. So this is the combination first step treatment algorithm, a dual fixed combination to start with. And so that's a big change from what we traditionally would have done, which is. Um, really getting one medication to a, to, a, to a top dose. Yeah. Now we're saying, well, the side effects of that might be a little bit too intense for an individual patient, so perhaps consider a dual therapy at a lower, at a lower dose for each. That's important, but we also learned that when we, um, when we combine different drug strategies uh, in, in patients, we are affecting blood pressure more intensively, okay. so we're getting these patients quicker to target if we use fix combinations and especially using combination of different drugs that interfere with different systems in our body. Okay, and I suppose since we're at an interventional conference, tell us, is there any change in the use of, of um, uh, I suppose, um, 
uh, be it renal denervation or baroreceptor um, treatments for, for hypertension, were they considered in this, in this edition yeah. of the guidelines? So we closed the review of the evidence for the guidelines uh, before two of the most recent three randomized sham control trials were available, so we haven't had access to the data mm -hmm. that indicates now that indeed denervation lowers blood pressure in these sham control trials in patients with and without concomitant antihypertensive medication. So the recommendation in the guidelines is that device-based therapies are not recommended for routine clinical use. I think that's an important statement, so it should not be used in every patient with hypertension. But the use is recommended in the setting of clinical studies until further uh, evidence on the safety and efficacy of these devices becomes available. So it's a class three indeed, okay. but should be used again and recommends to be used, uh, recommended to be used in clinical studies and trials. Okay, maybe uh, to, 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 to finish you could give us a, a brief summary maybe of one or two of those uh, clinical trials of device-based therapy that are coming that, that could yeah. change uh, those future editions of the guidelines. So we have three studies, the feasibility, so-called feasibility studies, two feasibility studies and one powered study that clearly indicate that the innovation lowers blood pressure, that provided the proof of principle for the blood pressure lowering efficacy. We have now three pivotal studies ongoing around the world that will hopefully be completed beginning of next year. But we're also getting new data on different indications with neuromodulation. And here at PCR, a study from South Africa will be presented where they combined renal denervation, uh, where, they, where they performed renal denervation in patients with atrial fibrillation and hypertensive heart disease, and they assessed the possibility of reducing recurrence of atrial fibrillation or preventing the development of atrial fibrillation in this high-risk patient cohort. So a very interesting study will be presented here at uh, the Heart Rhythm Society meeting a couple of weeks ago in San Francisco. Jonathan Steinberg from uh, New York presented a study where they combined renal denervation to pulmonary vein isolation in patients with atrial fibrillation. And he showed that in the cohort where they combined the treatment, neuromodulation plus uh, pulmonary vein isolation, there were 40% less recurrence of atrial fibrillation. So interesting study, new concepts, you know, not only sticking to hypertension, yeah. but also getting a sense of where the field is moving. Um, atrial fibrillation, heart failure, half path, but also hypertension. So more to come, I guess, in that interesting area. Fantastic. Thank you for your time, Felix. Enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thanks to you. What we learned today was that the new edition of the hypertension guidelines stick to the original definition, 140 over 80 millimeters of mercury of uh, diagnosis of hypertension, um, that we should start treatment um, perhaps earlier with uh, dual fixed combination treatments, um, uh, except for those very elderly patients, um, and, uh, and we should treat patients down to a blood pressure of 100 and 120 over 70 millimeters of mercury. Thanks for your time. Enjoy the meeting. Thank you.